Welcome to the First Day in Me Church Manassas broadcast, where the Holy Spirit empowers us to come together in the spirit of unity, ready to work and willing to serve. Sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still the hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore. I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't cease, and if the wind storms keep on raging in my life and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day still the hope that lies within is reassured I keep my eyes upon the distant shore. I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storm Storms don't see, 
say bless the Lord. Somebody had to say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, Brother Tyrone. Thank you for ministering under the power and the anointing of God. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 My soul has been anchored in the Lord. That is the best anchor. Bless his holy name. God, we thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you, God, for reminding us that when our souls are anchored in you, that you will always be there for us, leading and guiding and giving us strength. Thank you, God, the fact that our hopes are reassured as we keep our eyes upon you. And so, God, I pray now in this moment that you would bless your people. I pray, God, that you decrease me and increase your spirit and your will. Speak a word that will strengthen us today, God. Speak a word that will challenge us and empower us and propel us to go into the highways and the byways to proclaim what thus saith the Lord. God, we thank you now and ask you to bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Wow, the presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. We just want to lift up that first verse of Psalm 46. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. The Message Bible says, God is a safe place to hide 
ready to help when needed. Yes, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. We just want to talk briefly on this Samani thought. God is our help. God is our help. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. The word translated refuge in verse 1 means that it is a shelter, a rock of refuge. It is a place to go for safety. God is our strength because he infuses us with his strength. Therefore, we are able to stand in the midst of trouble. God has to vaccinate us with his power. The shelter that he provides will strengthen and enable us to stand fast in the evil day and having done all to stand as the spiritual battle between our righteous God and Satan Satan's wicked forces continues to rage throughout the godless nations of this world. And so the psalmist is affirming that God is a shelter for us, a place that we can go, a place that we can seek comfort. And God will strengthen us in times of trouble and crisis because in life, things don't always go according to plan. Calamities and crisis happen because things don't always go go according to plan. Turbulent and rough times come and unforeseen predicaments and perilous situations seize our attention because things don't always go according to plan. Uh, we face crises of various shapes and sizes in life. We face economical crisis, relational crisis, career crisis, even spiritual crisis. We face emotional, mental, and spiritual crisis. And right now, there is a health care crisis and a national crisis. And God allows crisis and sorrow to come into our lives. But in the end, crisis and sorrow and tragedy, depression and disappointment, they all have a purpose. And whatever the case, we all need help. And God is right here to help us. When we look at what is happening in this world, we need need the help of God. When you look at the White House and it, it is looking crazier than a crack house, we need help from God. When you look at what is happening in our justice system, uh, we have an AG that is not for the people, but for a, a crazy president, we need some help. When you look at what is happening in health care and in the environment with climate change, we need some help. When you look at what's happening in civil rights and the suppression of voting rights in 2020, we need some help. When you look at what is happening in financial stability and the wealth gap, church, we need some help. And right now, we all need to step back and reevaluate our lives and our understanding of what really is important. For all of us in this season are crying out right now in light of the cruel murder of George Floyd in eight minutes and 46 seconds where a white police officer had his knee on his neck. This is a tear in time for this history's 401 years of oppression of black people. And during a pandemic that has disproportionately sickened and killed African Americans, George Floyd's death unleashed a rage against a Oppression that has become a catalyst for uprising across the country and around the world from Paris to Sydney, Australia, from Amsterdam to Cape Town, South Africa, to thousands who have poured into the streets demanding justice and an end to police brutality. We are angered and disturbed by what we saw, and this is not the first time we have had a knee on our neck. White supremacy has had their knee on at the neck of black Americans for over 400 years. We have felt it uh, generation after generation and frankly we are tired. Enough is enough. And so 
know there is a cry in this land like we have never seen before. We are being choked in so many ways. We are being choked educationally. Many of our communities don't even have access to the internet. Millions of students have no internet and have had no internet while sheltering at home. Why? Because of the statistics say that 34% report not having internet because they could not afford the internet. Many of them don't even have a computer in the home and some of them live in areas where the internet is not available. Listen church, access to a quality education has always been linked to higher and better opportunities. A child's zip code should not determine the quality of their education or or their destiny, but this is a reality for us today. We are still being suffocated economically with the wealth gaps, with income inequality, earning gaps, low home ownership rates, and tremendous OM to the G, tremendous student debt. Don't raise your hand, but keep looking straight ahead. Lord have mercy. Building wealth in the black community has been an ongoing challenge because of systemic racism and discrimination. Discrimination. There is a lack of access of capital. There is predatory lending. And there are redlining of communities that has crippled us for decades. Racism, as we know, it is ingrained in the criminal justice system. We see it every day in the racial profile. And I was stunned yesterday to see that another African American was killed at a drive in at a Wendy's. I mean, really? What in the world is going on? on, but we see racial profiling and the fact that black and brown people get longer sentences. The criminal justice system has created a system where African, African American men are to be feared and taken down at all costs. And even when they have paid their debt to society, they are sometimes unable to make a successful transition and eventually return to prison because many of them face obstacles. What they are confronted with finding housing, finding employment, trying not to reoffend, and perhaps most importantly, the stigma of being an ex-offender. Oh my God. With our health care system, African Americans are more at risk with heart disease, diabetes, and hypertension. There is a lack of access to affordable health care, lack of access to healthy and affordable food. When we drive around sometimes we see we see fast food uh, restaurants on every corner. Lack of there's a lack then of access to primary and preventive health care. And in this pandemic, we have seen how COVID-19 has had a greater effect on our people than anybody else. Many did not have the option of working from home. They had to go to work and risk getting infected. And so, church, we are crying out to God because we know that in crying out to God, he is our refuge that we can go to him because he is a very present help in the time time of trouble. Yes, God is our help and God is the source and strength of our lives. When you are frustrated, God is your help. When you are angry, God is your help. When you are sad and depressed, God is your help. I don't know how you have been feeling with all of the events that have taken place in the world, but all of us need a safe place to process and express how we feel. And I thank God for the sons of Alan who on a Zoom call yesterday began to share openly in a safe space of how they were really feeling uh, with this whole issue of what's going on in the world. We need a safe place, y'all. And God is that safe place. God sends people into our lives that we can confide in, that we can open up and share how we feel. But then once we get all of that out, then there are some more things 
that we have to do. But right now, we've got to step back and reevaluate our lives and reevaluate our understanding of what is really important in life. Church, we've got to now be more engaged in bringing about a change in our communities and in our world. You say you have faith, then I say show me your faith by your works. You say you have faith and you read your Bible and you pray every day, but I need to remind somebody that faith without works is dead. Reading your Bible without works is dead. God is a very present help and God helps us to address and fight injustice in, in a meaningful way. Our faith goes beyond Sunday morning. Our faith not only transforms our lives, but our faith can transform our communities. Jesus had a ministry of social justice, and we cannot separate Jesus from justice. His ministry was one of social justice for all people. And so over these last 14 days, we have seen a lot of energy. We've seen perseverance. We've seen sacrifices that have been made through the peaceful protest. And let me tell you, peaceful protesting is great. Peaceful protesting is powerful and effective. But we need that same kind of energy to go to the polls. We need that same energy to bless somebody who has a need. We need that same energy to mentor a young boy or a young girl. We need that same energy to partner now with grassroots organizations that are advocating for social justice. We need that same kind of, I ain't gonna get no help in here, cause see when God begins to move you out of your comfort where you gotta really do something other than read your Bible and pray, oh we wanna take a step back. Keep looking straight ahead. We must now be a part of the change. Everybody has a part to play in. So church, you have got to find where you fit and God will help you find where you fit. Some of us have been standing on the sidelines so long, but now God is saying it is time to get in the game. We must be a part of the change that is happening now. Church, we've got work to do. And so today's message, it is a call to action because I believe there's something good is going to come out of this. I don't believe George Floyd's death will be in vain. There has been an awakening that has taken place over this entire nation. There is a change that is now here. And so I just want to leave you. Yeah, I'm done. Just leave you with a couple of things that you can do right now. Lord have mercy to activate your faith. If you have not already taken the census, I need you to go to the census right now at my2020census.gov. Taking the census determines the resources that we get for our communities. It determines the representation that we get for our communities. And so, church, the first thing you ought to do if you haven't already done it is take the census. You need to tell your family to take the census. You need to tell your neighbor, take the census. You need to tell your friend, take the census. Last time the census was taken, we, saw, we lost funding opportunities and we lost representation that was so needed for our communities. And so if you have not taken the census, it's still time, my2020census.gov. And then the next thing that all of us can do is to make sure you are registered to vote. Let's bring the same energy to filling out the census and making voting a priority. The Lord is my helper. He will give us what we need. God will use our voice. God will use our influence. God will use your service. And God will use your impact to make a change right where you are. Everybody has a voice. Everybody has a sphere of influence. Every one of us can do something because God 
is a very present help in the time of trouble. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. And this morning, if you have not made your profession of faith by accepting Jesus Christ, there is a number on the bottom of that screen. We ask that you would call that number. Someone is sitting there waiting to pray for you the prayer of salvation. We can only be empowered through the Holy Spirit. Yes, God is our helper, but that help comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so if you have never received Jesus Christ in your life, we invite you to invite him into your heart, to let him be Lord of your life, and let him move you into where he wants you to be. I was on a phone call this past week with several other pastors, and one of the pastors was sharing with us in terms of how we can better mobilize uh, our congregations to move forward in this time of advocacy. He said, each one of us has a voice. Our voices are powerful. Don't, don't, don't ever think that what you have to say is not important. Don't feel intimidated because other people have flowery words. You know, they have $50 and $100 words. Well, your word may be a dollar word, but it still has relevance and power because when the spirit gets on a $1 word, he can turn that into a $10,000 word. And so I challenge those who are often afraid to speak to open your mouth and let God use you to speak on his behalf. And so we thank God. We thank God for all of you. We know that in the days ahead, God has a major work for us to do, and we're going to be on board with that. We're going to have to educate ourselves about the various issues in the community, and we're going to have to come together because, listen, church, we can't do this work in and of ourselves. First AME Church can't do it by ourselves. We'd have to connect with others, with other organizations that are doing the work. That's when you, because God is already working in community. We just got to be where God is working. And so I pray that your prayer would be, Lord, use me. I know that you will help me, and I know that you will strengthen me. God bless you all, and know that I love you. Amen. This has been the First AME Church Manassas special online worship service. We pray that you were truly blessed and encourage you to share this message with everyone you know. We temporarily switched to this special online worship service for the health and safety of our congregation and those that worship with us and strongly urge everyone to follow the directions of health professionals to keep you, your family, and loved ones safe. We also ask that you continue to regularly support First AME Church of Manassas through your generous tithes and offerings through PushPay by texting Fame Church to 77977. Or you can give online at famechurch.com forward slash giving. Or you can mail your contributions to First AME Church of Manassas, 10313 South Grand Avenue, Manassas, Virginia, 20110. Once again, we pray that you were blessed by today's message and encourage you to share it post it and bless somebody else with a word from God. And most importantly, let us continue to pray for our world, our leaders and health professionals, as well as the most vulnerable among us. Be safe and be blessed.